chronic graft versus host disease. It's a serious complication of allogeneic stem cell transplantation and abrutinib was recently gr granted breakthrough therapy designation for chronic graft versus host disease after failure of one or more lines of systemic therapy. Here at ASH, a late-breaking trial of abrutinib in this setting after failure of corticosteroids. So to talk about this, I'm with Dr. David Miklos, who is an MD and a PhD, correct? That's correct. Associate Professor of Medicine, uh, specifically blood and marrow transplantation at the Stanford University Medical Center, and you established the Miklos Lab, which is a pioneering human translational research group. Remind us about abrutinib first and the design of this particular study. Absolutely. Uh, abrutinib is a small molecule inhibitor of the Burton tyrosine kinase molecule. It has its FDA indication initially with mantle cell, and now in addition, CLL, Waldenstrom. It's been heavily used in the treatment of B cell malignancies. And um, here, uh, we're using it for an entirely new indication. You may say, why are we at ASH talking about something which is not cancer? Exactly. But uh, again, there are many people going through an allogeneic transplantation, 10,000 people a year in America, probably another 15 throughout the world, and 40% of them end up with life-threatening and seriously comorbid uh, problems due to chronic graft-versus-host disease. These patients uh, have a diffuse uh, uh, syndrome of different constellations that are very much like autoimmune problems, scleroderma, lupus, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and they are debilitating. So there is no uh, indicated therapy. There is really uh, no big successes in the treatment of chronic GHD. And the mainstay has been steroid therapy for the initial treatment. So we enter into this uh, environment with many patients who we've been transplanting over the years who are looking for that uh, new therapy that can help them get their lives back. Um, and this has been uh, really the focus of my research uh, since we first showed allogeneic B cells and antibodies have a role in chronic GVHD as an ASH scholar supported research 10 years ago. Exactly. So now we were um, able to, with the support of uh, Pharmacyclics Janssen, to uh, produce a really, I think, uh, kind of breakthrough uh, study as the, as the FDA describes it. Well, these were patients who had either rash over more than 25% of their body surface area or an NIH mouth score greater than four. So these were definitely not responding to steroids. That's right. These are patients who had, uh, on median, uh, more than a year's worth of time since diagnosis of chronic GHD, had uh, been shown to be steroid dependent, uh, steroid refractory, unable to get off these corticosteroids that have tremendous side effects. And as you say, uh, they have uh, significant involvement of mouth and skin as an eligibility criteria. But they had, uh, most patients had uh, at least two organ involvements and uh, more than 30% uh, had three or more organ system involvement. These were sick people. So what did you do and what did you find? Right, at 10 centers since uh, July of 2014, we treated 42 subjects with the brutinib at the indicated dose of 420 milligrams uh, per per day, uh, once a day dosing. The uh, trial was designed as a phase 1B, but uh, the tolerability was excellent. The patients had no need to reduce dose, and so it was extended then directly into a 42 subject uh, uh, trial. And uh, the endpoint was the NIH criteria of uh, response uh, measurements uh, using uh, brutinib in conjunction with uh, whatever immune suppression they were already on. And so it's a uh, primary endpoint of chronic GVHD response. That's critical, and we're using the NIH consensus criteria that were developed in 2005 and updated in 2014. The overall response rate of 42 patients, all patients included, was 67%. That's a really uh, big number, that's an important number. And then of those patients who are responding, 71% uh, of the uh, 28 continue to have durable responses more than five months. And again, that's saying that not only did they respond, but they continue to respond Respond. For 20 weeks or more, that's pretty impressive. And, and there are many patients, uh, the, longer, tr the longest treating patients on trial, uh, there are some patients, I think 13 now, who are still on drug now more than two years out and are coming off the therapy, which is the most exciting part, so that we're getting people off of all immune suppressive therapies, which of course is the goal. And, uh, you know, how to manage this has been a part of the trial as well. There are uh, some side effects using abrutinib in the post-transplant setting. They didn't differ from how abrutinib has been uh, recognized uh, as uh, having some side effects in patients with mantle cell CLL and other malignancies. Right. Or, and they really didn't differ from the problems that we see with steroids alone. And that, um, it's kind of a concern when you hear that there were 52% uh, SAEs. However, uh, patients, uh, there were two deaths on the entire trial due to pneumonia, fungus infections early on in the treatment pattern. And the recognized uh, common side effects that are associated with abrutinib uh, that include fatigue, cramps, uh, GI disturbances, uh, and um, uh, bruising, ecchymoses, uh, were no different than the treatments uh, in these other hemolignancy settings. So we feel this is uh, relatively 
tolerable. Now you looked at biomarker changes too, right? Yeah, that's right. This is an exploratory study looking to make sure that we're hitting some of the pharmacodynamic pathways that we think are important in chronic GVHD. And so we're able to show uh, the persistence of uh, antibody responses, able to show the cytokine profile across B, T, and even uh, monocyte pathway responses that are all consistent with decreasing inflammation and improving the patient's uh, immune reconstitution. Uh, there is a lot more work to be done on the biomarker work, and that'll be going forward as we prepare the manuscript, of course, but it's uh, exciting to come forward with this 67% uh, overall response rate uh, and an opportunity here to bring a drug through the FDA with breakthrough uh, status indication. Now, when you've got a two-thirds response rate, any idea why the other third didn't respond? Uh, that's an excellent question again. And what we can recognize is that there were only five patients in the entire uh, trial that had progression of their chronic GVHD. And the reason that uh, patients came off study most frequently was due to adverse events or patient perception of problems. And again, if you weren't prepared to uh, manage the fatigue or the cramping or the uh, difficulties with uh, bruising ecchymosis and that caught you off site, uh, that might be very scary to a patient. And you know, managing the uh, brutinib associated side effects uh, will be an important part as we learn how to advise our patients going forward using this important drug. What's next? Uh, that's an excellent question. We are, um, with support of uh, Pharmacyclist and Janssen, able to come forward with a randomized controlled trial in the upfront treatment of patients with chronic GVHD. Uh, on average, this develops around 9 to 12 months after transplant. Patients receive high doses of steroids as a standard, and there is no established uh, additional medication to go with those steroids. So this trial design is a uh, high-dose steroid, uh, 0.5 mg uh, per kg of prednisone or higher. Most will be on one mg plus or minus placebo abrutinib in a blinded, randomized fashion, internationally, 186 patients, and nobody knows what they're getting, and the truth will be evident. It should be interesting. And so this is, of course, the gold standard to prove the efficacy uh, in a randomized uh, patient situation. So as a reporter, I have to ask, when will you have more, uh, more data that we can talk about? Well, I'm... I'm thrilled to report that the randomized control trial is already open at my institution. And uh, just to give you a sense of how rapidly we were able to uh, navigate this first trial, again, beginning in uh, July of 2014, and here we are at ASH in December 2016 reporting the mature results nice. of this 42-subject uh, trial. I anticipate two to two and a half years we will have the full mature data on that randomized control trial. Um, the other part of the excitement is, again, uh, ibrutinib could be used even before chronic GVHD develops right. in a prophylaxis or a maintenance phase post allo transplant. And again, I'm happy to report there's three um, committed, funded uh, opportunities to study this uh, at Stanford with my colleague Andrew Resvani, at uh, Moffitt Cancer Center with uh, Mohamed Dabaha, and at Vanderbilt uh, with uh, Madan Jagasia. These are all multi-institutional uh, investigator-initiated studies, and they are uh, together going to be treating, I think, over 230 patients in this very similar structured trial so that that data can be pulled together to ask that question, does it even have a maybe prevention of chronic GVHD? That would be great. Well, you'll see me back in your inbox again, probably in a, a year or maybe two, I would imagine. I, I look forward to it. I hope that we have this opportunity. This is a tremendous opportunity. And I again want to say I'm, I'm here on behalf of my, my colleagues who worked on this together. And uh, it's my privilege to be uh, talking to the, the people at home. But oh, thank uh, you. it's really a, a big group effort. And I want to particularly thank my, our sponsors. The um, difference between the prior works that we have done as investigator initiator or when I was doing this as a, um, again, Ash uh, scholar, right. uh, to to bring a trial of 42 patients through one and a half years to the ASH That's and present impressive. mature data and then have the opportunity to have it brought to the FDA so that everybody in the world's uh, patients can then get the right. drug is only through the dedication of the corporate sponsors that are uh, obviously taking on some responsibility for this orphan drug yes, chronic exactly. GVHD indication. Well, so I thank them. Thank you very much. And we have a lot of coverage here from the uh, ASH meeting. Please check it out online. And of course, in ASH Clinical News, I'm Rick McGuire.